Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out the card game Linko. It's for two to five players for ages 10 and up, with the average play time being about 20 or 30 minutes. The idea of this game is just to have as many cards into your personal score pile as possible, and you can do that by laying down sets. However, this game is pretty unique, at least it's unique to me, in the sense that you can snatch cards from other player score piles depending on the cards you lay down. And likewise, people can also take from you. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Alright, so as far as your components and game setup, I guess we'll start with the box and the box insert. Maybe a little hard to see here, but there's space on this side and space on this side for cards to stack. You've also got an instruction manual here. It's relatively short. It's about eight pages or so. It folds out. And then you've got some cards. Uh, basically the cards number between 1 and 13. There are some X's in this game that serve as wild cards. They can take the place of any number or they can be played in their own set, in which case they become the highest number in the game. And that'll be important uh, whenever you start card snatching, which I'll get to in a minute. Whenever you set up the game, you're going to shuffle the entire deck of cards minus this little Linko card. And this Linko card is given to the youngest player, and the youngest player goes first. Honestly, there's really no need to have this in the game as far as I can tell. Um, there is no, um, each player has an equal number of turns mechanic in this game, so it really doesn't matter who goes first and who has this card, or to keep track of who went first. So I'm just going to put this off to the side for right now. But the rules do state that the youngest player gets this card and the youngest player goes first. So in order to set up the game, you're going to shuffle all of the cards, you're going to deal six face up like this to form the card row. Each player receives a hand of 13 cards. Okay, so as far as gameplay is concerned, on a player's turn, what they're going to do is they're going to pick a number that's in their hand and then play as many cards as they want of that number. So we're going to take a look at this player's hand here. He's got some 5s, he's got some 13s, got some 1s, got some, okay, he's got 111, 117, 110, 118, two twelves. So he has uh, two twelves. So what he may decide to do, actually, let's just do this instead. How about we play the 5s? So this player is going to play a set here, and those are the 5s. Now there's no other cards showing right now, so nothing gets affected. And that would end their turn. So now this player is going to go. And he has a bunch of cards. Obviously didn't shuffle these very well from our last game. But let's just say he plays this Lone Tooth, okay? And I'll get to the card snatching in a minute for those of you that have played this game. Um, I just want to sort of get a score pile started before I, I address that mechanic. So this player has some cards as well. Um, how about he just throws down these three tens, okay? It's a set of three cards. And then this player here... He's going to look at his hand, he's got, um, why don't we go for a set of four, since we don't have, do we have a set of four in here? Yes, we do. All right, awesome, we'll do this. Okay, so this player is going to throw down a set of four twos. Okay, now what's going to happen is at some point, and it doesn't have to, uh, you know, one round does not have to complete like this in order for this to happen. Whenever you lay down a set, you have to look at everyone else's set. Uh, that is showing on the top right now, to see if they have the same number of cards in their set as you do. For example, uh, right now there's a set of two, a set of one, a set of three, and a set of four. All different numbered sets. So, set of two, set of one, set of three, set of four. There's not, a set of, there's not another set of two on the table. There's not another set of one on the table. So nothing happened during that first run, and that was intentional. But now I'm going to show you what happens when you do lay down a set that has the same number of cards in it that someone else has. So let's just go ahead then and throw down... Ah, here we go. Uh, three thirteens. That'll work. Whenever you lay down a set, you lay it down on top of an existing set. So now this is my top set showing right here. You've got three thirteens. Now this player, again, is going to look at all of the other sets on the table and say, okay, so does anyone else have a set of three on the table? This player does not. This is a set of one. This player does. This is a set of three. This player does not. This is a set of four. So the only player that's going to be affected is this player over here. So whenever this happens, uh, we're going to take a look at the number showing and see if it is higher than that current set over there. So 13 is definitely higher than 10. So now uh, something's going to happen. There's either going to be some card snatching or some discarding, whatever. Now what happens at this point? This player is first going to decide, okay, do I want these cards? If he does want these cards, 
he's going to take them away from this player and put them into their hand. And then this player has to draw that many cards from the card pool or the deck here or a combination thereof. If this player did not want those three tens, then this player has a choice to make. He can either remove them from the game completely, in which case he would still draw three cards from here, or he could decide to put them back into his hand. So in this case, let's just say that this player is going to take these cards like so, and that's that. All right, now just to give you another example of how that might play out, and again, this player is to draw three cards. Let's say he draws this three, this three, and he just draws blindly from the deck. He puts them into his hand and then you have to replenish the card pool after that happens. Okay, so now that was this player's turn, and to give you another example, let's go ahead and do it with this player. Uh, this player is going to go ahead and I'm going to try and play something like a set of four if I have it. Okay, this this will work. Uh, one, two, three, four. And he has more than four sevens, but uh, just for example purposes, let's just go ahead and play those. So this player is going to play four sevens on top of the two here. And now this these four sevens become the top set. Now again, this player is going to look at every other player on the table. Does this player have a set of four showing? No, he has no set showing, so ignore that. This player does. He has a set of four showing. This player only has a set of three showing. So this player is affected by that particular play. So now what's going to happen here is this player is going to decide, do I want these four twos or not? Let's just say that this player does not want the four twos. So now this player has a choice. Do I want to get rid of them out of the game or do I want to put them back into my hand? Well, let's take a look and see. Yeah, okay, he has, he realizes that he has two other twos in his hand. So he's going to decide to pick these back up, in which case he does not have to draw from here. And then on a future turn, he could play six twos. So basically, the more set, the more cards you have in your set, the more difficult it is for someone to take it. So, I mean, it's easier to steal a set of one than it is to steal a set of, say, seven or eight. So again, and that, that, that becomes that turn. This player does a, a turn now. And, okay, let's see if I can find a set of three that's actually higher than the 13s here. Um, oh, X... Now, let's say I had three X's here. I could play three X's. Thirteen is the highest number in the game, by the way, except for the X's. If I had three X's here, I could play three X's, and those three X's would then trump this set over here. And then that same instance would occur. Otherwise, you can play it alongside with another number, and that would simply be it. Now, just to show you what happens whenever you play a set where the number is not higher, let's say I played uh, these as three tens. I did one X and two tens. Okay, and that was my turn, or that was this player's turn here. He's going to look around the table. Does this player have a set of three? No. Does this player have a set of three? Yes. Is 10 higher than 13? No. So nothing happens. This player has a set of four, so nothing happens. And then the turn would move on to this player, and so on and so forth around the table. Alright, now this will continue with players laying down sets, stealing other cards, and until the point where, you know, this will eventually run out. As you take cards from other players, and if you decide to keep the cards yourself, that other player has to draw from here. If the player decides to remove cards from the game, if you don't want these cards, then also they have to take from here. But eventually, players will run out of cards to draw from this deck as they continue to refill it. And when all of these cards are gone... Uh, eventually these, sco these uh, score piles will eventually become a little bit higher than what they are now. But whenever this uh, deck runs out, that'll signal the end of the game. And regardless of whose turn it is, that's why I said before, it's not really important to remember who the first player was. Whenever this runs out, then that signals the end of the game. Players are going to count the number of cards they have in their score pile. It doesn't matter what value they have, they're all worth one point. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and then you're going to count the number of cards in your hand and give yourself a minus one point for each card in your hand, and then you're going to sum those up, and then that's your total. Whoever has the uh, highest total will win the game. Okay, so there you have it, a very brief look at Linko. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual. This was just to give you a general overview so that you could see how the game was played. As far as what I thought, I think this is a pretty cool card game. Um, the hardest part I had was wrapping my head around the card snatching mechanic. Luckily, uh, there is a flowchart in the manual, should you become lost. Like, if this, then this. Actually, it's on page 8. It's on the very back here. So, you can, I don't know if you can actually see it from here, but there's a uh, same number of cards, and the card played as a higher card number, yes, than this. 
no than this. So there is a flow chart to explain how the card snatching works and what options the players have. So if you do get lost, there is some help in the rule book. Um, and that's really the only difficulty I had learning this game. But And it didn't take me that long to figure out anyway. But I'm just saying that was the hardest part for me to wrap my head around. As far as the card game goes, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it does require a little bit of strategy. Uh, for example, let's say you've got... Um, Let's say you've got a card row, and, well, you, there's always going to be a card row until the end of the game, but let's say that there's some cards in that card row you really want. So what you may decide to do is throw down, like, a set of one or two that's easily, it's, a, it's basically bait, is what it is. Uh, you, like, may throw down two ones or something, or two twos, or one two, something that is easily uh, stolen. And then whenever someone steals that from you by laying down a card of their own, uh, you get to take from the card row in most circumstances. And then you can grab the card you want. So basically, you're getting rid of crappy cards that you don't want for cards that you do want so that you can start stacking up on 10s or 11s or 12s or whatever. And then you can lay down like a set of 13, uh, like a set of, uh, you know, 13s uh, like that are 7 or 8 in number. So if you have like 7 13s, for example, or 8 13s, those are a lot harder to capture. So you can essentially, again, bait players to take these smaller, easier sets, build up your hand, and then lay down a whole bunch at once that becomes incredibly difficult to steal. And then when you start playing uh, sets on top of that, then it becomes stacked or uh, stacked into your score pile, making it even harder to get to. So there's a bit of strategy in this game, but it's not strategy that'll uh, make your head spin or make your, your brain melt or anything like that. It's, it's pretty simplistic and I think it's a lot of fun. So if you do like card games and you're looking for something a little different, then go check this one out. If you want to see my written review, you can www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.